Welcome to Creative 10 channel. Today we want to show you how to machine knit a scarf with a cabled edge and hand manipulated ribbon. And I'm using the Karen worsted weight yarn, the medium weight. And I like to pull out from the center because it's already in the cake. I thread it up through the mast and the tension rod. And for the upper tension, I have it about seven. And the lower tension, I have it around eight on the carriage. In the beginning, I like to pull out the yarn from the center a little bit more so it's loose because it gets tight in the first few rows. I pull out the needle from the left 30 stitches to right 30 stitches. So the total is 60 stitches. And I just start with simple e wrap cast on. And I have cast on and bind off videos. I will link in the description below. After e wrap, place yarn back to the carriage and make sure the upper tension is not too loose. And the setting is set to need standard plain stitch. We need a few stitches and place the weight. And we continue knitting until there are eight rows. After we have eight rows, we can start reforming the ribbon. Because I have a reversible cable, so I have one by one ribbon around both edges, the left and right. The first A stitches and the last A stitches are for the ribbon and you will turn to cable. And in the center, I have it every third stitches pull out and that's the stitch I'm going to reform. So I have two by one ribbon in the center and one by one ribbon for both sides. So I drop down the first one. The, that's the second stitches from the outer edge. I just pull the needle out and push it back and open up all the rows. So I drop down all the stitches and uh, use my latch tool to start latching up and reform the stitch into a pearl stitch. The first two rows, I do it together and give it a twist so it's tight because it tends to get too loose if I don't do that. And then I will continue latch up to make it into the pearl stitch. And after I latch up, these few stitches will look like a knit from the back side, but it's actually the pearl from the right side. It does look tedious, but with a little practice, it's not that difficult. And then we just put this back to the needle close the latch and just flip it. Now it's back to the needle. And then we do the fourth stitch from the edge. Just drop off the stitch like before. And reforming back just like before. Give it a twist and and latch up one by one. And then place it back to the needle again. And we just continue going through all the needles we selected including the two, four, six, eight stitches from the outer edge and then every third stitches in the middle. And it's the same on the other side. Now 
that's what it looks like after we reform the first A rows. You can see the other side. It's a two by one ribbon in the center. And then we can add weights and start knitting the next section. We will need A rows of plain stitches. And then we will just reform the edge stitches this time. We will continue the edge pattern. That's the first A stitches. Reform the second, fourth, sixth, and eighth stitches by dropping it down and latch it up. And then we are going to do a cable crossing. So we start by dropping off the second stitch. You can take off the weight so it's not too heavy. So we drop off the second stitch all the way down until the previous reformed stitch and then latch up again. So you can see it's continuous from the previous reformed stitch. And we just keep going four times to complete the edge stitch of the one by one ribbon. And after we are done with all the latch up and reforming the stitches, we do the same on the other side. Drop off stitches and latch up. And that's what it looks like. Now we are ready to do the first cable crossing. We have A edge stitches. We can cross either left side on the top or right side on the top, as long as you are consistent. And I like to keep it symmetrical, so I will take out the outer four stitches first, and then move the inner four stitches to the outer. First, I use a three prong tool to take out the outer three stitches. I don't have a four prong tool, so I just use a three prong and one prong and uh, hold it on my hand and then take another three prong tool and transfer the three stitches to the outer three stitches. It might get a little tricky so you can use your hand to help if needed. I press my thumb in front of the fabric in front of the needles so it's easier to transfer. And then I and then I take my one prong tool to transfer the next stitch to the fourth one from the outer edge. Now we crossed one side of the cable. And next we just have to transfer the four stitch we are holding back to the four empty stitches. And it's easier to open up the latch first. and just flip up and the yarn should slide up to the needles. Now you can see the first cable crossing is made. And we want to make sure it doesn't slide out because the cable gets very bulky. So we push the needle out to the holding position or the D position on the LK150 machine. You can see it's very bulky there. And we do the same on the right side. We take the first four stitches out and hold it on the tools and then transfer the next four stitches to the outer edges with a three prong tool and a one prong tool. and try to help with my finger so it doesn't drop stitch.
Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but once you get used to it, it's easier. And then we transfer the four stitches back to the empty needles. And I always start by taking the outer four stitches so it creates a symmetrical cable crossing on both sides. Now we pull out the needle to the D position or the holding position so it doesn't drop stitch and you can see the cable is made. Now we can continue to knit the next part. We are going to knit 16 rows and every 16 rows we do a cable crossing. So we continue the knitting Make sure the rustle lever is on two, so the needles on the holding position is knit back to the B. I always put the counter back to zero before I knit 16 rows, so I don't have to count every time. After you've done the 16 rows of plain stitch, you can continue doing the same thing, reform the edge stitches, that means dropping down 2nd, 4th, 6th and 8th stitches and then reform it back and then do a cable crossing and it's the same on both sides. When you reform the stitches, make sure the that pattern is continuous from the reformed stitches below. Now it's reformed, we are ready to do the cable crossing again. And we do the same thing, pick out the outer four stitches and place it on the needle. And then move the next four stitches to the outer stitch. And then place back the four stitches you are holding. And that's pretty much the techniques we use for this project. We do the same on the other side and then we continue knit 16 stitches and reform the edge stitches, do the cable crossing and then we repeat again until the length you like. And I always like to set the counter back to zero before I need the 16 rows so I don't forget where I am. And when you knit, make sure the edge stitches are knitted properly. You might have to add weight or move the weight up every 10 rows or so. Or just pull the fabric down tightly by your hand so it doesn't get too loose and the stitch might pop off the machine. So that's the first part and you just continue knit until the length you want. Usually it's the length of your both arms open up. And in part two, we will show you how to finish up and uh, fixing mistakes. Thank you for watching and see you next time.